Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know, over the years of making all of these videos, I've had questions about Japanese pull saws, and people ask me, what's the difference from one to another? What should I buy? What works best? So today, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. A quick video on Japanese pull saws and what to look for. Now, in Western countries, the saw of choice for carpentry for many decades has been something called a push saw. And push saws come in two varieties. They come as a ripping saw and a cross-cut saw. <laughs> Just like every other saw that we have, there's ripping and cross-cutting. And the reason these are called push saws is because more wood is cut on the push stroke than on the pull. Let me show you. Now let's have a look at the push saw for starters uh, and typically uh, you'll see more material going off the front of the saw than off the back but we may not be able to see it but uh, we'll, we'll have a look anyway. And that's why these are called push saws, because most of the wood comes off in the push stroke than in the pull stroke. Now the difference with Japanese saws is they are pull saws, and they're the opposite. More sawdust comes off in the pull of them, but there's also a difference in the teeth. There's ripping and cross-cutting. Let me show you some table saw blades so you can see a better example. Here's a couple of examples of table saw blades, and you know what? Wood, <laughs> wood is always wood, and it doesn't matter whether it's table saw blades, push blades, or Japanese pull saw blades, the techniques are all the same. And this is a perfect example in table saw blades. For example, when you're ripping, this is a ripping blade, you can see it's got fewer teeth, in this case only 24 teeth. There's a bigger gullet because this blade needs to move out a lot of material when it's ripping and it's sort of stringy, it's the long side of the wood, so it needs to move a lot of material out. On the other hand, here's a ripping, or a cross-cut blade rather, and you can see that it's got much finer teeth, um, closer together and the reason for that is because it's cutting across the grain of the wood. It's only moving out little fine bits of sawdust so it doesn't need big gullets um, but what it wants is because it's cutting against the grain it needs to have more teeth. And guess what? Japanese pull saws are exactly the same and most pull saws you'll find that have a double side like this, if you look closely, and we'll show you that in a minute, one side will be a ripping blade and one side will be a cross cut blade. So there's a close up of that double sided blade. And if you look at the lower teeth, you'll notice that they're much finer than the upper teeth. And the upper teeth are quite a bit bigger. And just like table saw blades, the bigger teeth are always the ripping teeth. And if you look at them, you'll notice that they're even oriented towards the back of the saw. And that's because that's where the effort comes from uh, in the pulling. And just like table saw teeth, how they're oriented in one direction to cut into the wood, so is the same thing with pull saws. And if you look at the smaller teeth, even they're slightly oriented towards the back of the saw, but it's much more visible in the ripping teeth at the top. Not all pull saws are ripping on one side and cross cut on the other, but most of them that have this wedge shape like this are like that, so that's one of the things to watch for. Now, I have two versions of these saws. Uh, this one we've already talked about. The other one, you'll notice, has this black line here. This is a bar. This is a supporting bar for this blade, and it stops this blade from bending. Now, I'm going to talk about this one in a second, but before I get to that, this saw, for example, um, does have quite a bit of flex to it. Now you can't have a bar on top of this one because it's ripping so you wouldn't be able to because the bar would interfere with the ripping through the wood so you wouldn't want to have a bar on this one. But I also would use something like this for flush cutting. Let me show you an example. 
Now I use dowels in my woodworking a lot and sometimes I need to flush cut them for one reason or another and a saw that allows me to do that because it sits flush on the wood allows me to do that and I just it's so easy to just pull that and get a nice trim flush cut there and that's what you can get with that. Let's move on to the next blade and the one with the support bar on top. And the reason that there's a support bar on this one, even though this is a pull saw, uh, this blade on this one, I can, you can feel it, it's quite a bit thinner and I don't know what uh, the thickness is compared to this one, but you can see it and you can feel it and that's the reason they have the support on top. Now a blade like this, you'll also notice that the teeth on this one aren't blackened and you'll also notice that they're even finer than they are on what I call sort of the general purpose Japanese pull saw. This saw would be used more for doing dovetail cuts. It's a very fine cut and we, of course we don't want any kind of movement in the blade and that's why you would use a saw like this. Now you can also get these saws a little bit shorter which might be a little bit more convenient if you're cutting a lot of dovetails um, but this, that's what the, a saw like this is for is for doing fine cuts especially for doing things like joints where you want the best finest cut that you can get uh, and not taking a lot of material off. Okay, you've seen what the push saw can do. Let's have a look now at the cross cut and let's compare that. And typically you'll see more sawdust coming off the back of the saw this time. So we'll, we'll watch for that and see if that actually happens. Okay, let's take a moment and try the back saw now. And it's very, very fine. So let's take a moment and have a look at those cuts. I had a little bit of a rough start here on the push saw, uh, but you can see how much wider it is. And that steel needs to be much thicker because you're pushing it through and you don't want that steel saw to bend on the way through. There's the first pull saw and you can see that it's much finer and the steel in these can be much finer because you're pulling that steel, you're not pushing it. And there's the last one with the reinforcing bar at the top and you can see how fine that is. That's perfect for things like dovetailing and other kinds of fine joinery that you might be doing. Well, that concludes my video for today on the basics of Japanese pull saws. And yes, I do keep these in the little case that they came in. And the reason for that is I, it helps to remind me that I have some very fine teeth here. I don't want to crash them against other steel that I might have on my workbench uh, just so that they don't get bent or broken. But the good news is, and one of the things I really liked about these, you can purchase replacement blades and they're quite a bit less than buying the, the whole entire saw so that was another big plus for me but all the details will be in the article on woodwork web and the links for that will be in the description box below i'm colin cadet for woodwork web thanks for watching